The Art of Tooth Extraction Picking at Professor Kim's Incorrect Answer Note, Part 2 Hello, I'm Jeon Kim. I'm working at the Catholic University of Korea, St. Vincent Hospital in Suwon, South Korea. I would like to do Part 2 lecture following Part 1 lecture. Then, let's start the lecture. These are the contents of incorrect answer note cases to review together in this lecture. It was divided into before, during, and after instruction. Part 2 lecture will deal with during and after tooth extraction cases. During tooth extraction cases. First, displaced root. Linger and some mandibular spaces. First case is during tooth extraction, the remaining root was lost. The patient was a 22 year old female patient. The resident came to me in a hurry. During left mandibular third molar extraction, the remaining tooth root was lost. Isn't it possible that the remaining root has fallen into the IAN canal? Oh my! The peripheral view looks terrifying. So, I watched a pretty operative panoramic view. The left mandibular third molar is very close to IAN, but it looks a bit far away. Even on preoperative CB CT images, the root doesn't seem to penetrate completely into the canal, like this, 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 and this. So, in order to find out where the root was, the patient had CB CT take right away. Can you see or not? If you, you can't see it, let's move on. Then, did you find it? Right here, there it is. It came out of the upper lingual plate perforation and went down. But, thankfully, it's not displaced too much. If so, the residual root must be removed immediately. The important thing here is this is the moment now here. Once again, this is the moment now here. Place your right finger on the ringer gum to prevent further movement in the area. Then the retained root will be palpable. Support it with your fingers in an upward direction toward the perforated site where the root tip was pulled out so that it does not go down further. Secure the view of the perforated area of the ringular plate, changing the supporting index finger from the right hand to the left hand. It can be removed through a suction tip at the perforated site. If this fails, open the ringial flap to secure direct vision and then take it out with a suction tip or hemostat. So, thankfully, it was completely removed. And thankfully, there was no damage to the ringual nerve. Do you think I'm having a hard time? No, I am grateful to the resident. Tell me right away. As time goes by, residual roots are receding further and further. Late timing is a case like this. Another resident did the extraction. 
He said the remaining route had gone somewhere. He took an immediate post-operative pemiprika view. Oh, I can't see it. It must have been sucked into the suction. Yes, he thought. Oh no. Can you see it? The remained root is here. Why can't he see? And after a week, he took a post-operative panoramic view, and finally, he was able to detect the residual root. Here. And not immediately, but several days later, he referred to another professor. If so, in this case, the lingual flap elevation is performed in the state of raising the pressure upward from the submandibular area is already. After securing the visual field, it must be removed by suction or hemostat. It turned into a difficult operation and complicated operation. Shouldn't the root remain in the submandibular space? because of the possibility of infection. If it is too deep to remove, let fibrosis happen and then follow up. If it is determined that removal is still necessary, it may be pulled out through an extra wall approach. Summary of first case. Preoperative radiographs are closely examined. In particular, CBCT has more information than we think. If it is attached to the lingual plate, you should not apply force in the direction of pushing to the lingual side. This is the moment now here. If the remaining root has been displaced to the lingual side, by penetrating the ringer plate, once your index finger is placed on the ringer side and supports it in an upward direction toward the missing perforation point. If the retained root tip is not small, it can be felt with your fingers pushed back into the socket. After securing the view of the lingual alveolar bone penetration area, remove it with a suction tip. The possibility of lingual nerve damage needs to be explained to the patient once again. Second case, displace root into the maxillary sinus. This is a 41-year-old female patient, and the resident came running to me saying that the root had fallen into the maxillary sinus during right upper first premolar tooth extraction. Looking at the preoperative panoramic imaging, it seems that the root was easily fractured and could be fallen into the maxillary sinus. Our resident also obtained informed consent previously about that. However, what really happens is a different matter. The exact location of the missing radio root must be confirmed. Interoperative CBCT was taken. If you look closely, you can see that the root is inside the black maxillary sinus. Can you see it? Like this one. Thankfully, this had not been displaced too much. This is because the muscle sinus is not just a hollow hole in the bone, but is lined with the mucosunodarian membrane. We need to secure the view of surgical field. 
sufficient suction to the sinus membrane population area step by step to a deeper place was performed and then it was removed. The perforation size was less than 5 mm, so insertion of collagen plug, figure over 8, and interrupted suture approximation was performed. And I prescribed antibiotics and SAIDs and renoebastel. Wait here, let's summarize. How to remove the retained root pushed into the maxillary sinus? Suction the extraction socket to check if the lesion root is visible. If you can't see it, you need to secure an accurate view through CBCT. Try to remove it while suctioning through the maxillary sinus perforated area through the extraction socket. If not, a bony window is formed on the lateral bony wall close to the extraction socket. After removal of the retained root, the extraction wound is sutured closely to avoid oral fistula. How to suture when maxillary sinus is perforated during maxillary extraction? Determined by perforation size, it is limited to cases without maxillary sinusitis. First, perforation is less than 2 mm. Insert a collagen plug to maintain a blood clot and explain precautions to the patient. In my case, I put in the collagen plug and add a horizontal figure of H chip to hold it. Second, perforation is 2 to 6 mm. Collagen plug Figure of 8 suture, for one week, antibiotics and antihistamine nasal decongestants or complex drugs. In my case, I add interrupted suture without undermining within the range where blood circulation is maintained, and use drugs such as renoebastel or etifed or sudafed along with antibiotics. If perforation is more than 6 mm, you must perform a primary closure through the flap elevation, releasing, undermining, buckle advancement flap, or rotational flap. Someone says I cannot perform curatis the inflammatory granulation tissue for fear of perforation. In that case, you may experience osteomyelitis with acute or chronic maxillary sinusitis. Please perform curatis the inflammatory granulation tissue and then appropriate treatment should be followed. Summary of second case. See the x-ray before surgery and be sure to explain the possibility of maxillary sinus perforation and get informed consent. During surgery, Manipulation of instruments in the direction of raising the tooth above the maxillary sinus is prohibited. Nevertheless, if the residual root has displaced into the maxillary sinus, check that the residual root is visible through suction of the extraction socket. If you can't see it, you need to secure an accurate view through CBCT. Try to remove it while suctioning through the maxillary sinus perforated area through the extraction socket step by step to a deeper place. If not, a bony window is formed on the lateral bony wall. When the closure is performed according to the size of the perforation and the condition of the maxillary sinus. The precaution and medicine prescription for maxillary sinus perforation after surgery. Third case is residual fractured root. This is probably the difficult case you experience most often. 
The patient was a 19-year-old male patient. The resident sent me a patient during the operation, saying that the resident root would not come out even after repeated odontectomy. In the periodical view, I could see the resident struggle with tears. The major calm portion remained as thin as a shell, so the tooth was not coming out because it was cut. This is a preoperative panoramic view. Looking at this x-ray, it looks like the extraction is easy, but you can see that the third molar crown portion is tilted a lot into the second molar cervical area, like that. This is a preoperative CBCT. The third molar crown portion is major tilted a lot into the second molar cervical area. Here is the history of the resident struggle. She wondered why the tooth didn't come out and took periapical view. The upper part of the crown was removed through the odontectomy, but the lower part of the crown remained. So, in second trial, the crown was removed enough to show the travel club bone pattern through it but it is no longer possible to remove it because of the lower and angular portion that remained like a hook. So, in the state of lingual flap protection with a surgical curvet, completely odontectomy is performed on the lingual part of the crown that remains thin like a shell. Odontectomy is performed after making the raw part of the crown more grooved with a burr, then the crown portion is completely removed. The root can be easily removed. Voila! All crown and root portion were extracted clearly. This is summary of the case. Residual root does not come out. First, be careful when extracting teeth using a tooth forcep that looks simple but it is not simple, especially endodontic history tooth, ankylosis root, old age patient, root dilacillation, divergent hypersmetosis root. Second, do not neglect the tooth root separation using the drill. Doing it now is much more convenient than ostectomy the alveolar bone around the invisible remains root later. Third, nevertheless, if the remaining root are firmly enclosed and do not come out even after death, put gauze into the extension socket to control bleeding. Also, stop your eyes, hands, and thoughts for a moment. You may have missed the big picture of the extraction because of the small point you keep looking at. Remove the gauze and secure the field of vision by saline irrigation. Don't just look at the root tip margin you saw earlier, but expand your field of view. Is there a thin upper part of the root like a shell on the top or not? Apply force in a different direction than the direction in which force was mainly applied to the root tip previously. For example, buckle to wingle, then wingle to buckle, measure to visitor, then visitor to measure. It may be a problem of the direction in which the root tip is bent. And attempt to remove the surrounding bone and separate the remaining root within the range that IAN and muscle sinus are not damaged. You can use thin root pickers and explorers 
which can be bent to assess the root. However, each can be broken. Be careful. What if the steel does not come out? Don't be fooled. Let's think wisely. Risk versus benefit. The criteria for this decision is whether or not the residual root is infected, the length of remaining root, and the proximity of the IAN and maxillary sinus. If you decide to retain the root because it is less than 3 mm and the remaining root is free of infection, it will be necessary to take an X-ray, inform the patient, write a record in the medical record, and follow up periodically thereafter. After tooth extraction, inferior alveolar nerve paresthesia. Actually, it occurs during tooth extraction. However, we realize that after surgery, a 37-year-old male patient referred from a local dental clinic with the chief complaint is that the right mandibular wisdom tooth was swollen and painful. Both mandibular impacted surgeries are very deep and appear very close to the IAN. Still, the thanks first thing is that CBCT can secure a better preoperative visual field. The pictures you can see now can be extracted without worrying too much about IAN damage. However, it is not really easy to have the canyon and the root of the mandibularism teeth attached like that. It is very difficult. With some teeth with the mandibular canal running between the root are the most difficult to extract. Shall we also see the CBCT of this patient? Do you see the root winding around the mandibular canal where the mandibular canal is shrinking as if if we're going to disappear after explaining to the patient that the possibility of nerve damage after tooth extraction is very very high the tooth was extracted as you can see the root was bent like that and nerve was passing in between here The so next day, the raw right lip and chin area is numb. No matter how much I told the patient before, and even if I had obtained informed consent, both the dentist and the patient are embarrassed and upset. So was this patient. Can you see the right mandibular third molar's root? Something is very unusual. Can you see the root wet around the IAN on CBCT? It is the point. I was as careful as possible and finished the extraction but this patient also said that the next day, the sensation in the lower right lip and chin area was dull. Another important thing here is not that I had no sensation at all, but that my senses are dull. Why does hyperesthesia occur? If you have seen intact IAN, with your own eyes during surgery, be prepared for some hypoacesia. 
during an atrial surgery, bleeding flows into mandibular canal, and the IAN in the heart canal suffers from compressing nerve injury. Thankfully, most are temporary, but sometimes permanent. Place your hand on your heart for a moment and think, was there direct nerve damage or not? If it is clear that there is direct damage referred to oral and maxillofacial surgery at a tertiary hospital. Otherwise, if the nerves are intact, it would be good to try a conservative treatment. This journal is about the clinical outcome of conservative treatment of injured inferior alveolar nerve during dental implant placement. There is a conservative treatment protocol in this journal. In the beginning, steroids are prescribed and if the patient suffered from abnormal sensation, neurotin is prescribed. Afterward, vitamin B12-16 and says for control pain and zincomine to improve blood circulation as prescribed. My protocol is also similar. First of all, you you plan to do a conservative treatment, you should pray. There are limits to what I can do. And then, Patients are prescribed corticosteroids. Start prescribing immediately after surgery and prescribe for 10 to 14 days. The corticosteroids reduce cytotoxic edema, improve nerve cell survival, reduce perineural inflammation. However, be careful to prescribe to patients with DM. The second drug is NSAIDs. NSAIDs reduce pain associated with sensory impairment and recovery, prevent development of chronic neuropathic pain. Third drug is vitamin B12 or vitamin B12-16 complex. It promotes perineural nerve regeneration. I prescribe the above medicines first. If symptoms do not improve within one month, consider referring to oral and maxillofacial surgery at a tertiary hospital. Summary of this case. First, prevention is best. Please fill out the extension informed consent form and explain it well. If, nevertheless, the patient has paresthesia, calm determination of whether or not it was direct nerve damage. If you decide to do conservative treatment, proceed with the treatment according to the protocol with a prayerful heart. Don't miss the referral timing. Second case of after restrictions, mouth opening limitation, TM joint trauma or infection. The orthodontist referred the patient with suspected symptoms of TM joint trauma with the cheek complaint that the mouth did not open after tooth extraction. If the right jaw was swallowed, I would have thought it was an infection without a doubt, but there was no external swelling. However, she said that she had a sore throat and there was no pain when palpating the TM joint or master muscles. Enhanced the CT scan showed the palatine tonsil swelling and pterygomandibular space enhancing. So, antibiotics medication was prescribed. If the symptom did not improve, incision 
and drainage was scheduled, but thankfully, it was a case that responded to the antibiotic medication and got better. Summary of after tooth extraction second case. If the patient jaw does not open well after tooth extraction, several possibilities can be considered. First, inflammation of the masticatory muscle or wound infection including telecomandibular space abscess or damage of TM joint during surgery. Evaluation of TM joint, master muscle, and temporal muscle is needed. If the opening is limited by infection and inflammation, please remember that you have to prescribe the antibiotics and NSAIDs, not a muscle relaxant. The last case, acute or chronic maxillary sinusitis. The patient was a 51-year-old male. His chief complaint is the persistent swelling and pain in the upper right wisdom tooth. It doesn't seem easy to extract. Also, there was something to worry about. If you look at CBCT, the infected wisdom teeth was completely in the maxillary sinus, so maxillary sinus perforation was unavoidable. The patient was explained the possibility of oroenteral communication or fistula and the possibility of additional surgery obtained informed consent and the surgery went well. However, the oral and fistula continued to remain in the second molar distal area. Pus came out and right uninator sinusitis was severe. If so, we can consider right of pus second molar to be the problem. Because if adjacent bone is present at the site of maxillary sinus perforation, the oral of communication closure can be healed. If the contaminated root in the maxillary sinus perforated area is exposed without bone up to the apical, healing does not occur here. This is because the root acts as a ladder to remain the oral antler fistula. So, I explained the situation to the patient. After extraction of second molar, oral enter fistula closure was performed with buccal advanced flap. Since then, it has been complete healing. At the time of extraction, buccal distal root irreducible pattern was shown like that. Due to the previously measured tilted impacted surge molar crown, This patient was sent by Department ENT to evaluate odontogenic maxillary sinusitis. A CT scan of the patient showed an oral antrafistula here and severe right unilateral maxillary sinusitis. Similarly, right upper second molar became a problem after third molar was extracted. The CT scan is in the maxillary sinus state one month after extraction of second molar and oroental fistula closure. You can see that it has been healed cleanly. This is the summary of last case. Before tooth extraction, the possibility of perforation of the maxillary sinus must be explained and written consent. In the case of unilateral maxillary sinusitis that occurred after maxillary posterior tooth extraction, the possibility of odontogenic maxillary sinusitis was confirmed. In particular, in the case of the third molar, check 
the possibility of remaining old and flat fistula due to the root of the adjacent second molar. If the oral antifistula remains, it will recur if they have to take antibiotics for 100 years. Please remember, if odontogenic muscular sinusitis is suspected, a referral should be made to an oral and maxillofacial surgeon. There are many complications before, during, and after dental surgery. What if the dentist predicts it before surgery, informed consent from the patient, and treat complications appropriately? Thank you for your attention. The Art of Tooth Extraction, picking at Professor Gim's incorrect answer note. End of part two.